Jenny Anderson and Steve Sauer are wood fire ceramic artists living in the Puget Sound area of Washington State. This video is being made as part of an exhibition of the work of the two artists being held at the Island Gallery on Bainbridge Island during the month of August 2012. The video includes a joint interview with the artists and examples of their work, with special focus on the preparation for this exhibition. Both Jenny and Steve knew they were artists from an early age and both pursued drawing and painting prior to discovering the beauty and challenge of wood-fired ceramics. Both are innovators working in an ancient art form. Jenny lives on Bainbridge Island. Some examples of the range of her ceramic work are shown here. She is the recipient of the Island Treasure Award given by the Bainbridge Island Arts and Humanities Council to recognize outstanding contributions to arts and humanities. Jenny studied at the Cornish College of the Arts and focused on ceramic art after taking a class from noted ceramic artist Patty Warashina. Her wood-fired experience began later and both she and Steve now fire with a community of artists. Jenny's wood-fired ceramics include traditional bowls, exquisite vases and chests, and detailed sculptures that convey stories from the earth. Steve lives in Port Orchard, Washington on the Olympic Peninsula. Beginning as an oil painting and art history student in college, he was inspired to concentrate on ceramics after taking a class taught by Patrick McCormick. Beyond that course, he reports he is largely self-taught in clay. Examples of his ceramic work are shown here. Steve has been a lifelong student and innovator, carefully observing and documenting the results of the interaction of various clays and materials, artistic structure and fire, and using his findings to stretch the limits of his art. He gives teaching workshops sharing his findings and techniques with others. His artistic evolution has included travel to Japan and elsewhere to meet other artists and study their techniques. His influences include well-known ceramists Ruth Duckworth and Hiroshi Ogawa. Steve's experimentation and innovation have resulted in a wide range of work, from very large vessels and standing figures to smaller, refined, classical tea bowls. Most recently, he has been exploring ways to expand the color palette of wood-fired ceramic art. How did you come to ceramics? Uh, well, I was interviewed just the other day and my, my quip was, it was for the money. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely the money. That's a good plan. <laughs> yeah, it was, you know, good money, yeah. Uh, actually, I was painting and made this decision at one point because somebody told me that they knew these potters and they were they were making money, you know, they were selling stuff and making money. I thought, okay, I'll, I, I know how to do pottery. I, I did a little pottery. I took one class. Yeah. And <clears throat> uh, I thought I could support my painting habit with uh, <laughs> clay and, you know, kind of fell in love with clay and mm -hmm. that was the end of my painting until just recently. And Jenny? Yeah, I didn't really, um, I had always wanted to take a pottery class, but I never did until I enrolled at Cornish. Um, but I enrolled as a painting student, and um, but Patty Warashina was teaching ceramics at Cornish that, for just one year. So um, I, and the ceramic studio was set up in this old house in, up on Capitol Hill. It was this, a whole house given over to clay and I walked in the door and it was another one of the aha moments. It was just like, ah, this is where I belong. And so I I started when I was 19, I guess, and loved working on the wheel. Um, Patty wasn't doing a lot of sculpture then. She was throwing, but she was amazing on the wheel. And, um, and there was a whole real exciting uh, raku set up. There was all kinds of gas kilns and a lot of freedom to do whatever you wanted to. Late at night, whenever you wanted to work, you could be there and make stuff. So that was a fun introduction to clay. Yeah, met some neat people. I'd like that if I could just uh, uh, put in there that whereas I had, uh, you know, started doing clay on my own basically, where it really took uh, hold for me and started making sense was when I stumbled into a workshop at Pottery Northwest in 1978 and uh, not even knowing, uh, having a clue who this person was, I was just, they said that they had a couple of people drop out and wanted to know if we would, we were there for another reason, wanted to take this class. And I said, 
oh sure, you know, it was 60 bucks. And I said, sure, who is it? And she said, they said, Ruth Duckworth. Ah. And I had no idea even who <laughs> Ruth Duckworth was, mm -hmm. but, but that changed my life overnight. Right. Ruth Duckworth at the time was probably written up in Ceramics Monthly as one of the 12 most famous ceramics in the world. And it was a two weeks hands-on workshop sort of, you know, it was only two weeks, but it was like that. It was, uh, we were making, she was demonstrating, and then we would make. What an opportunity. Oh, cool. God, it was just <laughs> incredible. It was incredible. And that, that, that was the, the beginning of what I'm doing now. And then what led to the focus on wood-fired ceramics? Go ahead. Well, I need to answer that. Oh, well, for me, um, I went over to Archie Bray in 1999 and took a, a wood fire workshop over there. And at the time, I didn't know that Steve was building a kiln and that there was already a wood fired kiln almost built here. But and in fact, it was built. Mm -hmm. But right after I came home from that workshop, I found out that Steve and Ken had had built uh, Santa Tsugama and started firing with them. So. It just seemed uh, a natural sort of evolution from my work in Raku and pit fire to do another type of uh, ceramic medium that um, where the fire itself is kind of responsible for the finish that you get on the piece. And this, I remember telling Steve, I said, this seems like real ceramics. Um, it was, it seemed much more permanent and um, almost geological uh, than the low fire work that I've been doing. So, yeah, I was hooked as soon as I tried my first wood fire, yeah. Let's see. Well, um, a friend uh, of a friend came and told me that there was a kiln being built down in Oregon, and it was an Anagama. I didn't have a clue, again, what even that was. And uh, he was going down to fire this uh, kiln for the first time, and I asked if I could uh, put some pieces in the kiln. And he says, "Well, he says, don't give me anything good. He says, I'm just uh, emptying off my scrap, crap off the shelves, and just you know, it's first firing. It's probably not going to do anything at all. So, but I gave him two sculptural pieces that I, you know, I didn't." You know, it was one way or another. I didn't think they were great or anything, but so I took him down. He took him down. They fired him, and I went to the unloading. Well, they well by the time I got there, everybody had unloaded and already left. But uh, there was uh, Hiroshi Ogawa. It was his kiln, and so I just met him for the first time that day. And I went inside the kiln and just sat in the kiln, and it was. Uh, was one of those things you would call a spiritual moment. I mean, I just sat in there and just in awe of this um, architectural feat. Mm -hmm. And I just knew at that moment I had to be part of this, whatever that was. Mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't even know really what it was or what I was getting into, but I knew I had to be part of it. And so uh, he asked me if I would want to come back and fire with him. and. I fired from the second firing through uh, over 25 firings over five years, and uh, that was the beginning of what we have now. Two more kilns up here, and yeah. and uh, uh, a community of like-minded, silly people mm -hmm. that <laughs> want to throw wood inside this big box and make art. And uh, hopefully, that's what we're doing. And in this process, how do you think you have evolved? And what has been your path of experimentation, Steve? Well, well to me, um, the first thing was is that when I discovered wood fire and combined it with the sculptural techniques that I was using to uh, from, that I learned from Ruth Duckworth. The marriage was fantastic. Those first pieces that I took down to Hiroshi, they didn't come out of the first firing very well, but he, he kept them and fired them in the salt firing the next time. And they came out fantastic. I mean, I was hooked. Everything just looked right. I mean, the, 
the, uh, the textures, the surface, the variation, uh, the stories that were told all around the pot, different one side to the other, um, just worked so well for me. Uh, it was just incredible. My path of experience, right, uh, experimentation is developing uh, clay slips to, to facilitate uh, color. It, uh, one of the firings, uh, a couple of friends said, you know, and, and rightfully so, when you fire a kiln, everything that comes out of it has the same sort of, to sort of tonal range. And it, and it was just like, oh, another wood fire, it's all, it's just boring, it's all the same crap. Why did people do this same stuff over and over and over? And Well, to me it was like, well, that was the point, you know, you wanted to get this look, this wood fire look. But I sort of took what they said to heart, and, and so I started looking for other uh, color ranges that you can still have the uh, serendipitous effects of what the fire gives you and the variations of the wood and, and the clay clay body but to, to develop color was the first uh, sort of uh, s uh, you know stepping aside from what the mainstream wood fire look was and then from there developing uh, new forms still using the basically the hand built coil slab type techniques that I learned from Ruth Duckworth. I just I feel uh, like it's a it's a really privileged place to be able to be part of an onagama kiln and um, the work that comes out of it is so unique to this particular landscape that we live in because the surfaces are covered with ash of things that used to grow here and um, so for me it, it it's a continue uh, what kind of how do I say um, wood fire creates a, a circle in my life on all different kinds of levels and um, the circle of friends is a big reason that I stay with it um, the there's biggest. just nothing else like the community of a group of artists working really hard to achieve a good result for everybody and um, and it's fun to just get down and dirty and work really hard <laughs> with your friends you know that's just fun so really and we've had all kinds of artists of all ilk come, come mm -hmm. to the to the openings and see the the effort of the community not only the community of the artists but the community, mm -hmm. you, and mm -hmm. the, the local people. The, the wood guys. The, yeah, yeah every, everything. Uh, it, it's an amazing uh, coming together of people. And to, to step back to the circle, uh, it's um, uh, rock has decomposed into, into clay over millennia, and, and trees have uh, decomposed and, and add to the the material that winds up being clay and, and you and you take this clay and you form it, <clears throat> put it in a kiln and you fire it with trees that are local. Each firing is is um, is like a birth. Mm -hmm. uh, you're 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 taking this and also it's, it's also like a like a birth, but it's also it's like a archaeological it's dig. Like a tomb. <laughs> yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And so it's always a surprise. That's one of the one of the uh, great draws for everybody. There's a letting go process at almost every stage of the game. You know, you put it in the, this kiln, um, and you have to be ready for whatever. <laughs> if they, I mean, you're going to do your best, but lots of times things happen, and um, especially in wood fire. You prepare yourself for that all the time because you really cannot tell what you're going to get. So. You fire the kiln and what comes out will be what the kiln gives you.